Good afternoon to you all. It's really a pleasure to welcome you to the second Adedeji lecture. Last year when we launched this uh, new series, it was um, the occasion for us to celebrate the contribution of Donald Kaberuka. And uh, I'm very pleased that today we have Arjun Chang as the lecturer. Uh, in fact, it's very befitting for a variety of reasons. I'm going to mention some. We have been working for the last four years tirelessly on industrialization issues. And a lot of our inspiration has come from the works of Arjun Chang. Uh, this contribution has been remarkable in many respects, but what uh, particularly attracts me um, to his books and his uh, contributions and also to his presentations. I have been privileged to uh, be uh, participating in some. Is is excellent mix of history and economics. By bringing to us the experience that other regions, countries have gone through uh, in different stages of their uh, development, it does bring light to the fact that some of the things that we are told as absolute truths and normal in today's world are not quite the way uh, they look when we go into history and we try to understand what happened in these different countries that are serving as examples when they were in similar uh, moments of their uh, economic trajectory and were making similar choices than the ones we are facing. So that is a, a unique contribution. And I think also we are very privileged by the fact that uh, Arjun Chang comes after Donald Kaberuka because he has been uh, one of our partners and the African Development Bank as one of our partners together with the African Union constitute the trio. And Madame Zuma also was present in the launching of the series that has initiated this drive for us to uh, focus much more on structural transformation uh, at the continental level in these three institutions. And I'm very pleased that, you know, we are continuing from an intellectual point of view in the same direction with the lecture that we are going to have today. The second reason it's so befitting to have uh, Arjun Chang with us today is because he has been involved with colleagues from ECA. In fact, he has led uh, the production of a book that is going to be launched this afternoon on transform transformative industrial policy in Africa, which is a companion uh, book to our report, economic report on Africa on greening industrialization. And the two, complete a series of contributions we have been making on uh, the discussion about industrialization in the continent. And it is very um, happy coincidence that we are having Arjun Chang for both the uh, launching of the book that he has uh, led in terms of uh, authorship and also uh, the possibility of having him as the lecturer for this series. Um, another reason I think is so befitting to have Arjun Chang is because we are at the moment where the debate about industrialization is not just circumscribed to Africa, but also to other parts of the world that are revisiting their strategies in terms of industrialization and are giving impetus to a certain number of readings about the contribution that industrialization normally makes for altering the systems of production, the way we look into productivity, and the way we look into some of the developments that have uh, occupied us of late, like you know the role of trade and the relationship between trade and development, and also the issues of intellectual property and how they influence and impact innovation and technology. And of course, the dynamics that we are witnessing in Asia, and particularly uh, the conversion of the Chinese economic model. And as a result, you know, what impact it does have in regions such as ours, but also what lessons can we draw from uh, that particular experience that has been so inspiring for us, uh, not just China, but uh, Southeast Asia. 
And of course, because Ajun Chang is from Korea, um, it is excellent that we can also go beyond just China. Over a number of very important lessons from all uh, Southeast Asia, for which he's a real specialist in the sense that he knows uh, not only from uh, literature, from his contributions theoretically, but also knows from, uh, you know, emotions, because he was part of, uh, you know, growing up, uh, reading and studying that particular reality. Um, this is not my first time engaging uh, Professor Chang in things I'm uh, involved. I, I tried the same when I was resident coordinator for the United Nations in Brazil, and I could see that he was so inspiring there that by the time, you know, Ajun Chang came a second time, uh, some of his books have become um, a, a must read by all diplomats in Brazil, uh, a decision by uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the country. So I don't know whether after you have listened to him, it will be a must read, a mandatory for all ECA, um, uh, uh, ECA affiliates that can be not just staff, but all the people that, you know, contribute to uh, the discussions that we are promoting, but I'm more uh, sure that you are going to be inspired, and I think uh, this is going to be a brilliant lecture. Let me say something about the pattern of this lecture. It's not a coincidence that uh, we have created a series with the name of Adedeji. Uh, for a lot of Africans, Adedeji is uh, not just uh, an important beacon of uh, intellectual contribution for uh, the development of the continent, but also a builder of institutions. Um, this part of his uh, contribution is probably less known, since uh, Adedeji uh, uh, contributions can be uh, melted in the, the larger collective of people that he used to lead and inspire. But, you know, I think it is befitting to uh, acknowledge that he was, uh, in the minds of many, if not all, the number one contributor to the Lagos Plan of Action. In the, he was also involved in the Abuja Treaty. And of course, he was also one of the persons that actually created the instruments that now have uh, become uh, ECOWAS or CDAO. So he was really someone that has been very uh, relevant in building institutions. And of course, the APRM in itself was also uh, uh, linked with the heritage that he contributed to the, the committees of uh, eminent personalities that were put together by the African Union. Um, he has been really a major um, force uh, in the debates about Africa's development when he stood up and uh, had ECA defy the orthodoxy of the time with the alternative framework for structural adjustment it was not just a proof of courage. It was also a proof of intellectual dynamism. And because we want to continue with that tradition of disruptive thinking, it's very important that we continue to emphasize that we see ECA as truly a think tank. And it is this role as a think tank that is going to make ECA relevant. Of course, we'll continue to contribute to all the intergovernmental processes and the various attributions that are expected from a commission that is part of the United Nations. But what really will make us relevant is not that. What will make us relevant is the fact that we are uh, going to give importance to our role as a think tank. And I will not really be diminishing um, anything in the extraordinary heritage and contribution of Adedeji, if I say that if we can even claim to have such a role is thanks to the example and what he has done when he was in charge of ECA. So for me, it's like a distant mentor, and that's why I'm so proud, not only to have contributed to create the Adedeji series, but also to have here 
his son, Doin, that is going to address you, that remembers certainly the first time I went to uh, tell this idea to his father. And you know, and I remember his words were more or less these. He said, but what do you want from a old man like me? You know, what contribution can I make to what you are doing? You are the new generation. It's now your turn. And I said, yes, if uh, I take it in a metaphorical sense, and if you are one book end, I will try my level best to be the other side, the other book end. Thank you. <laughs>